there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to color code some glitter. I know that probably sounds really strange, but the reason I want to do this is because I really like the storage that this glitter comes in. This is the Arteza 48 set of glitter. Um, it's nice and fine. I really like uh, really fine glitter because it seems like it doesn't flake off as easily, and you can, um, like, I like to use double-sided tape with it, so when you sprinkle it on the double-sided tape and then you take, like, the backing from your double-sided tape and rub over the back, it really locks it down. It doesn't want to flake off and it feels smooth instead of rough and it's just wonderful to have and um, I just thought having 48 different colors would be great. I have run out of a lot of colors recently. My kids use it and I just love glitter. I think it, you know, you can use it to add a classy little bit of sparkle or you can go whole hog and make it totally blingy. So it's just one of my favorite craft staples and it doesn't go out of style. Glitter is always being used for something. If it's not popular today, then wait a couple weeks. It'll be popular again. So what I want to do, because I want to keep everything stored in here, because this is really the perfect storage container, um, I want to be able to see what colors I have. You can kind of make out what color they are there, but um, not as well as like you'd be able to see through the clear sides. I thought about flipping the insert over upside down, but then I realized if I tried to pull out the glitter, I most likely would end up pulling the cap off, and that would be a huge mess. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the cap off and just set that in there to hold it. It's kind of like a test tube rack. I can hold it there so it doesn't spill. And then I'm going to use score tape, and this is the half inch wide, um, and I am going to cut a little square of it for the cap. Hopefully, hopefully my scissors don't get too sticky because that is a challenge when you're cutting score tape because it's so sticky. I'm going to cut, but I want to do it in like nice little neat squares instead of just tearing it. You could tear it and it would totally work, but I want this to be nice and neat since I'm doing a video because <laughs> I know it will drive some people crazy if I have crooked little, you know, rippy <laughs> shapes on there. And then I'm just going to give it a little snip here. Oh, this is good video. Uh, just like that. Okay, so now I've got my little square on there. I'm going to use the back of my fingernail to burnish it. If you don't want to, you could use a bone folder. You just want to make sure you're getting it stuck really well to the cap. And then I am just going to peel off the backing. Okay, now we've got to get some glitter on there. And I think what I'm going to do is just hold it up to the bottle like that and just flip it. So I don't have to like pour some out into a dish and waste a bunch. And there we go. I think I can get a little bit more on there. So I'm going to take the back. This is what I told you here. I'm going to take the back and kind of rub it in. I think I could put a little bit more on there. Now, another thing, if it, it's not so important with glitter, but if you are using score tape for like microbeads or anything else, it's a little bit more um, heavy. What you can do is you can actually heat the um, the tape. Now, I probably wouldn't want to do this on a plastic cap, but you can you can heat it with a heat tool, and then you can. Um, uh, then you can burnish it down and it will really lock it in. That's really great if you like to like do microbeads on a pen or um, you're just putting that double-sided tape on something to like maybe use fabric or something where you really want to make sure it's on there good. And there we go, we've got that one indexed. And all I gotta do is pop this cap right back on. So whenever, you, if you feel like your score tape is not holding what you want to hold, heat it. That's going to make it a lot better. Now, I do like to burnish it just because it it's going to help it lay flat against the adhesive and make it less likely to flake off and also make it show a little bit truer. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of these, and then I'll show you how it looks when we're all done. Here's a time-saving tip. Just go ahead and put all of the, cut all the squares and put them on all at once. You can do this a lot quicker this way. And that way you can, and you can just unpeel the backing as you need to when you hit each, um, when you work on each of the little vials. So uh, yeah, that's gonna save you quite a bit of time. Okay, let's take a look here. I um, swatched all of my glitter and kind of rubbed it in really well uh, so that it shouldn't come off my fingers. I'm just covered with glitter right now, so <laughs> so you're going to see glitter on my hands probably. And um, then I put them in kind of like a spectrum order so that um, I could see my similar colors side by side. So the neat thing about this that I didn't realize when I was looking at the glitter is that when you swatch them out, you actually can see the nuances between the colors. So we have these... Um, we have these four reds here, and I can see this one is way more orange. This would be really nice for a fall card. This one is more true. These two are more true, more like a Christmas red. This one's a little more
more pink. I can also see about how transparent or opaque they are and the coarse, uh, the, the grain of the glitter, whether it's coarse or fine. Um, the more transparent a glitter is, the more kind of classy and subtle it's going to look and the more opaque a glitter is, the more glitzy it's going to look. So like if I look over here, we've got a couple um, let's look at these two orange glitters here. This one is very metallic and reflective and opaque. If I was to say um, stamp something and use a sticky embossing powder and then use that glitter, that's going to cover up um, my ink that I stamped. If I was using this, I would definitely need to stamp in a colored ink for it to show. But then again, like if I was doing some polymer clay and I just wanted to brush over it, have a little bit of sheen to it, I could put on some light um, acrylic sealer and then then sprinkle on some of this and it's going to give me just a super light pretty sheen um, and if you do glitter painting this would be really nice because you have a really nice variety but I really liked seeing like the transparent ones versus the opaque ones and then knowing that I can really accurately tell what I have even these two blues that look just like the same color you can see this one's a little bit fine uh, coarser that's a little finer so the coarser one's going to give me more sparkle the finer one's just going to give me almost like a like a lame type fabric look. Uh, so I really recommend that you swatch them even if or, or I mean if you can't swatch them or you have different um, maybe a bigger jars that you can store differently um, in my glitter drawer I'll show you that in a second I store all my um, my bottles with the ends up so that you can see what you know what colors they are. I'll show you that too so you can see. I'll set this out of the way. So here is my glitter drawer. Um, I don't, I actually don't have this one upside down because it's an open um, silver glitter. Uh, if I store it upside down, it would spill. I could put tape over the top of it, but I only have like uh, one or two of these and I use those for Christmas crafts with the kids. Um, the stuff is either on its side or it's upside down. Like this is my flocking powder uh, from Doodlebug and seriously, this vial will probably last a lifetime. They, it almost seems like it, once you use it and you go to put it back in the jar, you have more than you started with. It's crazy stuff. So all my flocking is upside down. My clear glass glitter I do have right set up just because I'm afraid that the corks might come out but I can see around the edges well enough um, and like smaller vials I just kind of throw in there just because I can see the sides but this is kind of what you get when you collect glitter over years for pro like and you grab a tube when you need it for a project you end up with a big mishmash of different stuff and glitter does last a long time but I had run out of quite a few different colors with my kids using my glitter so um, it was good to restock. I do my embossing powder the same way. Of course, you could emboss a little swatch, but um, for me, I've used embossing powder for so long that I can tell what I have just by looking at it. I know that this is going to be a shiny, deeper burgundy when I'm done. I just need to have a basic... Um, a kind of view of it. The only thing I don't store upside down are my white embossing powders because I have, or the ones that look white in the jar, I have them um, written on the top just so I know like this looks like a white embossing powder. If I had it upside down I'd think it was white but um, it's actually like a blue iridescent satin type of color so I have these right side up because they look the same that way I can see what they are or I wrote it on the side if I couldn't have it fit right side up in my jar. So uh, that's how I do that and hopefully you found that helpful and I will link up this uh, set by Arteza below so that you can find it if you want. 48 colors, I think it's around 26 bucks so just over 50 cents a tube and um, it's a really nice variety of colors if you want some ultra fine glitter. Um, and it comes in a really nice case but I know some of you guys would just throw away the box and maybe try to find like a plastic tray or something for them but I really encourage you to keep the box maybe even if you want to cut the flaps off and set it in a drawer uh, but I mean this lets you see everything and I think that's uh, really smart packaging and anytime I can reuse the packaging and not have to throw it away or recycle it I think that's better I think it's better to reuse something than recycle it um, and this is super handy so there you go please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video if you have any questions on how I store my glitter or embossing powder um, well I, I think I pretty well covered it but if you have any questions go ahead and drop them in the comments below and until next time happy crafting